All right, here we go. We have, at the time of this recording, a pretty major worldwide event going on. So many people have reached out and asked, hey, Char, what are you doing to sort of accommodate for what's happening and take care of yourself, your family, those you care for and those you love? So I thought this month, our health, wealth, and happiness training, we would dive deep on exactly how I'm amping our immunity and protecting ourselves from what's going on, this viral outbreak that's happening right now. That being said, I was so blessed and honored to have an interview with Dr. John, one of our uh, mastery community members who's really crushing, helping people through the power of science and understanding the biology of things, like the, the cellular part of this. So that'll be in part of today's training for you as well. Before we get started though, I just wanna say thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to help you, support you, care for you, and those you care for, even challenge you, because that's gonna be a big part of our dialogue today. Challenging us to live better versions of ourselves, that's always my premise, to improve our lives, improve those around us, to live into health, wealth, and happiness. So that'll be in frame. If you've been in our trainings before, you know how this goes. We're gonna start big picture. Then we're gonna dive into what I classify as the training, specifically the 10 fundamentals, then we'll get into the crucial needle movers and inside that part of our training, we'll have the interview with Dr. John for you. And then finally, I got an action list for you as well. So I wanna make sure as you get out of today's training that you are set to go prioritizing what needs to happen for you, boots on the ground, taking care of it, taking care of your family and going and taking it from there. Cool? That being said, let's go ahead and jump into the perspective. And this is my kind of way of saying, you know, if I'm gonna measure my life in any way, Here's the five ways I'm gonna measure it at the big picture. The five P's as I like to call them. So the very first P, and I'll challenge you to understand whether you've been living this way so far this year. So at the time of this recording, this is March of 2020. So for the last, what is it, 12 weeks, 10 weeks or so, have you been living purposefully? The first P. And what that basically means is, have you been feeling a sensation of purpose? Helping others typically improve their lives. And if you're blessed to do the work that I do, helping others grow their business too. So when I measure purpose, I'm like, did I help people improve their lives today? Did I take care of the people that I'm responsible for? And did I help other people grow their business today or this week? And am I doing the very best I can there from best practices? And that's how I measure purpose. So I'd love for you to take a moment and assess how purposeful you felt this year so far, zero, not at all, to 10, crushing it. If that rating falls below an eight, go ahead and note, all right, if I'm gonna feel more purposeful in the next week, here's some calls that I need to make, here's some actions I need to take, here's what I need to go after and do. Does that sound good? I hope just from that you're feeling like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, getting on track. Sometimes we can get, and I, this happens to me, so please know I'm not like any better than anybody else that I get so far off purpose because I get so far in my head. And I'm just like, ugh, man, I gotta get back to. And so my practice is to make a few calls. Call my brother, call my sister, call my uh, mom, call my dad. I did that yesterday. As a matter of fact, when I was in the car, I was just like, hey, check, check, check. Let's go through, see how everybody's doing. Feeling very purposeful about connection, love, engagement. So many of the principles we're blessed to teach as part of the high performance journey high performance coaching. I've coached now over 3,600 sessions in the last eight years, and I've helped hundreds of people get more clarity, energy, courage, but feel more purposeful and have a very well-defined purpose statement too. If you have any desire to talk about high performance or to become a high performer, anything like that, there's an application below. Me and a lot of our mastery community members are certified high performance coaches, and we're happy to help you just to step into that next level for you, whatever that is. And we're not bringing any judgment into this. It's just wherever you're at, that's cool. Let's just see what we can do to help you go down a, a better, more vibrant, more loving, more joyous, more confident path in life and do it consistently over the long term. Purpose, first P. Second P, passion. Now I challenge you this year so far, how passionate or emotionally engaged, connected, to life, emotionally enthused, you felt in your life going after the things that you love. And if that's a zero or a one, you and I need to talk. Life's too short not to have passion, emotional enthusiasm, engagement in good ways. 
So what is that for you in the last, let's just say the last 10 weeks? Zero, no passion at all, 10. And if there's spots of passion, how can we bring more of that into our life? Does that all make sense? Sweet. Hope you're sensing where this is going. We're getting some momentum here. Third, positive. Especially in light of what's happening right now in media and the stock market and everything else, it can be very non-positive. Neutral, negative feelings, seeing wealth that's created over years just disappear, or degrade, these kinds of things. But what are you doing specifically to bring more joy, more positive mental energy, emotional enthusiasm, coming back to passion, into your life on a consistent, enduring basis? What are you listening to? What are you reading? What are you watching? And does that need to pivot at all? So if you were to rate positivity in the last 10 weeks, 0 to 10, how have you been doing overall? If it falls below an 8, what are you doing to level that up? Does that all make sense? Fourth P, productive. How have you been doing it living productively in the last 10 weeks? And when I say productive, from the high performance perspective, that means that we're handling our responsibilities and our priorities, but we're also going after our life's work, our life's ambitions. And we're clear about what those are. A lot of the work that we do in high performance, especially in the first 12 sessions, what we call the core sessions, is defining what it takes for us to live a productive life. Going after our life's work, and sometimes people call that a bucket list, but then also taking care of our responsibilities, reaching out to the right people, waiting on people, making sure that we're following up with people, going after our dreams, our goals, desires, is a big part of productivity. Not just getting a bunch of stuff done, but getting the right things done, I like to say. So in the last 10 weeks for you, how you been doing there? Zero. What? I don't even get up. I have no production in my life. I don't get my responsibilities done. To 10, I'm crushing it. Going after my life's work, I actually have time blocks in play every week where I strategize and strategically schedule myself to work on my projects. Well, I also have time blocks to handle my responsibilities. Laundry, groceries, bills, uh, picking up the kids, all those kind of things. What's showing up for you there? Good stuff, isn't it? So if it's below an eight, once again, what's one thing you can do to level that up? Just think about what that could be for you. And if you need some insight or help, comment below. I'm in there answering comments, taking care of it, making sure you're taken care of. That's my job on this beautiful planet. I got clear on my purpose quite a while back, and I'm so blessed and honored to be here with you. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. Final P, number five, profit. Especially now, some people are freaking out because they're like, oh, the markets are tanking. And I don't have savings, and I don't have these things set up. So one of the things that we teach in the realm of what I do with health, wealth, and happiness is assuring that we have our break even, the amount of money that we need, and we know that number, the amount of money we need every month just to survive, it takes care of our house payment, or mortgage payment, or our rent, our car payment, insurances, groceries, everything. And then we have a, a money above that, that we live and enjoy life with. And then above that, we have savings, and or we're paying down debt. So those are the kind of three big buckets here. So I'd love to know how profitable have you been in the last 10 weeks or so? Zero, I'm living paycheck to paycheck, I'm in debt. And there's no judgment here. Please know this is a safe zone for you and I. If that's your scene and you want help with that, please let me know, comment below or email me, whatever that is for you. That's my job is to help you out of that. I'm so clear on helping you improve your life to get that sorted. And we've got a lot of great results generated from that, really going after that with so many people. I'm just so blessed to be able to tell you that. It's freaking awesome. <laughs> so how are you doing in profit for the last 10 weeks? Zero to 10. And be real with that. If it's a low number and you need to level it up, what do you need to learn? What do you need support with? What do you need some more uh, distinction with? What do you need to change behaviorally to make that shift? And if you need some help there, I'm here for you. And it's beautiful because we got a community of people too that are here to help you as well. If at any point you want to join our community or go into that, feel free. There's an application below for that. And we'll be happy to help you out. There's different ways you can get into our trainings online and really go after. What I love is our very first training in the health, wealth, and happiness realm and in the business internet realm is starting from scratch. So you know from the best practices, here's how I can really go after these P's, but specifically the profit P, uh, fifth P, as we call it. That all being said, this ends the big perspective part of our work together today. Let's dive into the training and get right to the meat so that I can help you because time is of the essence, at least as of this recording, to make sure we're doing the right things, to mitigate 
to reduce uh, the chance of getting the latest outbreak, but also to make sure that we're protecting ourselves for the future and our family. So you can hear a lot of that in here. So where I want to start this training is in the 10 fundamentals. These 10 areas that are critical, four of them are in red for a reason. These are the things you need to be dialing in now if they're not dialed in. I've also got ratings for us on these because here's what we know. Unless we're assessing ourselves in these areas, we're less apt to make change for the future. And my dream for you, my dream for you is that you have with ultimate levels of clarity, the areas that are needed need to be handled now. And you'll hear this in Dr. John's interview in mind. The very first item is sleep. Sleep is everything toward having an immune system that's where it needs to be, meaning getting the proper amount of deep level of sleep. Dr. John will go more into detail about that in our interview, but I challenge you over the last 10 weeks, in light of all the news and everything else, how well have you been sleeping every night zero to 10 on average for the last 10 weeks? And for me, that's been about a nine. There's been a couple times in there where we're traveling and things, things got out of alignment, had guests and stuff like that, got a little bit out of alignment, but I'm on it. We're doubling down on sleep. And by what I mean by that is eight hours of sleep per night is what I need to function really well and feel fully rested. But I'm also programming or having a great nighttime routine to get into a good quality rest. Stop eating a couple hours before bed, assuring I'm drinking fluids, water, next item on the, uh, the 10 fundamentals, by the way, <laughs> and then making sure I'm eating nutrient rich 90% of the time nowadays. Although in the last few weeks, to be honest, it's been a little out of that just because of all the travel that I've been in. And I had some opportunities in Vegas to really enjoy some good foods, but boy, am I back on it in, in with the due diligence going after it right now, making sure that I'm taking care of it. So sleep last 10 weeks. How have you been doing? I got a nine second item. Got my water right here. I would challenge you at this point, maybe pause the video. If you're watching the replay, get your water. If you don't have it, Hydrate. Here's one of the things we know. Our bodies are mostly water. It's the thing that requires us to move infections and things and cleanse our body and purge toxins. So hydration. How have you been doing the last 10 weeks? Do you have water bottles by you at all times? So when I was traveling, I recognized I fell off the kind of wagon about having water with me and drinking it. And that was a two day window. And man, I paid a little bit of a price for it. So I've course corrected and got that. I got two water bottles right here. I have them with within arm's reach typically, whether I'm driving somewhere, whether I'm going somewhere. And it's been a huge practice of mine. So we know from amping immunity, sleep and hydration are huge drivers of making sure our body's functioning properly and is at top of its game from being able to fight any infection that comes in and get rid of it quick, get the toxins out of us. Third item is eating. And specifically eating nutrient rich food. And I think the easiest way to qualify that is to say, is the food I'm eating of color and not Skittles, <laughs> but green spinach, green kale, red peppers, tomatoes, oranges. We'll talk about vitamin C and its power in terms of bumping immunity and so on a little bit with Dr. John, those kinds of things. Are you eating 90% nutrient rich? The beige foods, the breads, pretzels, uh, French fries, potatoes, these kind of things, maybe more on the 10% side. How are you doing there in the last 10 weeks? Be honest, zero to 10. If you're eating boxed foods, they got to go. Processed foods got to go. We're talking raw fruits and vegetables, carrots, celery. Uh, last night I had radishes, uh, cauliflower and a hummus made of chickpeas. Like this was a delightful dish that I had at a place that I love down in Naples called Bartulia, four bucks, huge plate of hummus or a huge bowl of hummus with all these veggies, fresh veggies. And I was like, yes, it's so good. These kind of things. How are you doing there? Be realistic with it. If that falls below an eight in the last 10 weeks, what's the one thing you can do to shift that? Is it getting a few bags of pre pre cut up carrots and just having them with you if you like carrots? Is it getting red peppers and cutting those up and having those that are so good for you and your body? Is it getting it used to, and I, a lot of people go, eh, when I say the high performance shake, which is day three of the 10 day health, wealth and happiness challenge, I make that for you. 
It's, uh, and if you want access to that, it's down below as well. There's links for it. But it's spinach, strawberries, organic strawberries, organic spinach, blueberries. Sometimes I put banana in there, a couple powders to get the supplementation, the vitamins and so on. And then I'll put in uh, coconut water and almond milk, both organic. And I'll have that as a meal. Like literally, I put in a big Tervis tumbler and I have that as a meal. I've been doing that since 2013. And a lot of people are like, dude, your skin it looks good. It's like radiant. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not eating processed greasy food. I'm eating more nutrient rich. Back then it was more like 60% nutrient rich. But if you're really going after amping your immunity and protecting yourself, right now it's the time to really own what you eat. So I hope I've given you some insight. Again, go to day three of the 10 day health, wealth and happiness challenge to see me make the high performance shake. The link's below. That'll give you a good idea what nutrient rich eating is about. And I talk a little bit more about that as well. For me, that's been an eight. I had some Vegas time in there. Things went a little south, although I do eat really well out there, but course corrected fast. I knew what I was doing and I was on, I was like, oh, this is so tasty. I got to try this. But now I was back into salad, back into nutrient rich eating very quickly. Next up, exercise. Here's what we know. Sweating, getting sweaty is one of the major ways your body releases toxins. So how often in the last 10 weeks have you either through exercise or working out or, or uh, swimming or hot tub or sauna sweated, right? Just sweat out toxins from your body. Our goal, our job, our desires, we talk, talk about in high performance is we call the two by twos. Two days a week, 60 minutes of moderate cardio. That might mean walking fast for you and lifting a few weights. Two days a week, 20 minutes of higher intensity cardio. That might mean like aerobics. That might mean, uh, you know, burpees, kettlebell swings, going after a pivotal shift of all of these different things and just owning it, getting into a higher heart rate for 20 minutes. If you can hit four days a week like that, that is what so many people and science is showing is optimal for our body in terms of the fact that we're meant to move. But our lifestyle today, being in front of computers and screens and so on, isn't about that so much, depending on what you do, of course, as a job and the way your lifestyle is. So just the bare minimum, what I call the minimum effective dose, thanks to Tim Ferriss for talking about the MED, and that's it two by two. So how well you've been doing in the last 12 weeks or 10 weeks with that exercise. And I got to tell you, I've been falling off a little bit as I've been involved in so many projects. So job one for me right now is to bring that back up. So what I mean by falling off is I'm running one less time per week than I need to. And I'm not hitting the weights like I usually do. Maybe I need to bump that up two more times a week and just bring that back online. I still am doing it at a baseline level, but I need to amp that just a little bit for me. Now let's get into the green. These are the four critical things you have to have and that we have in play to amp our immunity and protect ourselves from what's happening right now in the world, but also as a long haul play to live a healthier, happier life, right? So the next three breaks. How often during your day are you taking productivity breaks? We call them just time to step away from what you're doing. Maybe 10 minutes, get some more water, go to the bathroom, get rid of toxins, take a walk, energize your mind, reflect on how you've been doing today. Think about your intention for what you're going to do as you go through the rest of your day and then get right back into your work. So many people report that they feel like a zombie in the matrix. Like yesterday's is repeated. Today's repeat tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. When they don't take the time to emotionally connect throughout their day. That's what the breaks are about. It's a physiology thing. It's a mindset psychology thing around health and happiness and they would say even wealth because the people that get this, typically do better from the perspective of profit and wealth in terms of relationships because they're more emotively connected in their day. So I've been doing the last 10 weeks and breaks zero. Don't take any 10 been crushing it. Have a timer set every 50 minutes. Boom. 10 minute break. I'm up moving around, listen to a song or two to get energized, setting some intention, maybe meditating about going into my next chunk of time. Good stuff so far. How are you doing? Is this too much? I hope you're doing okay. Here's what I know. This stuff, and I get chills just telling you this, is everything towards giving you the emotional fuel catalyst connection to making right choices that can help you. And I would dare say save lives as this virus can spread just the way viruses work. The last thing that I'd ever want to see you have happen or anybody that I know or myself is to me be the trans transit of this virus to somebody who gets it and doesn't make it. 
would not want that on my, my consciousness. That would be intense. So I'm doing everything I can to not only take care of me, but assure that I'm not the conduit to others as well. And I'm listening to the rules, listening to the self-quarantine and all that. We got all that stuff ready if we need to. We're ready to handle it. Some people are stocking up on toilet paper. And we're good there. But I'm just saying that we're really ready for that if that needs to be handled. So I just want to make sure we're, we're kind of focusing this in on what the topic of today is, what's showing up in the world today. But also, this is a journey, not a destination. These changes that we're making better help you and your family and those you care for and love for the future too. So this is the power of what's going on here. Breaks are a really important part of it. Next is general happiness. What are you doing to not get fearful, get negative, get neutral? You, this is a big part of this conversation is what you're reading and watching and listening to. And then thinking about the last 10 weeks, how have you been doing it? Introducing positive ideas, positive thoughts, uh, bringing the joy in the morning. So let me give you just a couple of distinctions. Things that people that I've coached have reported that works for them. One, they do not read or watch the news. They'll skim headlines later on in the day, but they do not do that first thing in the morning. But rather they listen to something uplifting, even if it's just songs they love. And then they get into a, a day about, here's what I'm grateful for. Here's what I'm hoping to achieve today. A big part of this high performance planner helps you have what we call morning prompts that guide your mental, your psychology, and your energy, your physiology towards these kinds of things so you prime your day in the proper way. On the opposite end of that spectrum, there's night evening prompts that help you wind down your day to be thankful for what you did today, to sort of plan how you want to feel tomorrow, schedule tomorrow, and think about tomorrow from, here's the things that I'm going to do tomorrow. Here's how I want to do them with excellence. Here's how I want to be careful about things that could throw me off and go after that. As you can see, this all plays a role in the huge happiness part of our journey. I know I threw a ton at you there. <laughs> how are you doing? Last 10 weeks, what's showing up for you? Zero. I'm not happy at all. And if that's your case and you need some help, I recognize I may be your conduit for help. Please reach out to me. Let me know. We're on that. I just want to make sure I'm doing whatever I can to help you feel better, improve your life, feel happier, feel more connected, feel more supported, feel more unconditionally loved. I happen to be really good at that. I got great role models in my life, my beautiful grandparents, my parents, these people that were in my life to really showcase how that was for me and me putting that into the world for you. If you're in a hurtful place right now, that's the least I can do to help you. Happiness, zero to 10. So for me with breaks, that's an eight. For me with happiness, that's a nine. There are times, just human, things go sideways. Wake up and there's just a cloud over my head. But I've got practices in play to, rec to rectify that to write that ship, to course correct. Cool? Next up is finances. And this ties directly to profit. So the rating may be the same in the last 10 weeks. How have you been doing in your finances? For me, 10. Really dialed in on prepping for any kind of recession, which it, by the math, we are in, as of yesterday, a bear market in the stock market. Stocks and everything have gone below 20% from what they were just a few weeks back. And it's primarily induced just because of all the things that are being locked down and the fear of unknown in the world. But we're set to, to be able to, to live in our normal, comfortable life for an enduring period of time. And my dream, my goal, my desire is to have that for you too. So where are you at here? You know, maybe the same, like I said, in the profit realm, in terms of you're going to be able to cover your break even for the next six months. You've got money set aside for fun and adventure even if it isn't going to concerts and things because they want to kind of bring that down as this virus does its thing. And then you have money being saved for the future or put in assets, paying down debt, whatever that is. What's that rating for you? So for me, that's a 10. And that covers the green. Breaks, happiness, and finances. Blue is blue sky. These are the things that if you're really on in life, these are the fundamentals that go into play to amp your immunity because you feel better and you feel just connected to the moment. So the next one is presence. In the last 10 weeks, how present, how engaged, how connected with yourself and the people around you have you been? Zero to 10 on average. Zero, not connected or present at all. I'm looking at people that are meeting with me. I'm paying attention to my phone. I'm just not in the moment. You can tell when people are connected. 
I'm connected with you right now, rocking it out. How have you been doing there? People's immunity goes up when they feel loved, cared for, and connected. There's science behind that. So presence is a big part of that. For me, boy, I've been, I'm gonna give myself a seven because I fell off big time in the last few weeks. So much got, came up and I got hit with all at once. I was not my most present self. And I'm gonna be open and honest with you, I'm working on that, getting that back online fast. Doing pretty good, dialing it back, getting, getting course corrected. Next up, we've covered it, purpose. So you can give yourself the same rating you gave yourself up there. For me, that's a nine. How purposeful have I felt in the last 10 weeks? We're doing all the work to put goodwill in the world with our new weekly wisdom. Email blasts every Sunday at 5 a.m. that goes out. Putting great, and I'm getting great feedback on it. It's really helping people live better lives and think about things that they didn't think about, those kind of things. So really going after that, but I'm feeling very purposeful in my relationships too and in my work. So just kind of all around. But whatever that is for you, if it falls below an eight, think about ways to level it up. Cool. And then finally, the actionable piece to this. How well have you lived into a daily plan? Do you have a mechanism, big part of this is about that, for structuring tomorrow? Now, my approach to it is I use what we call the one-page productivity plan, and I have that in Evernote, which is a note-taking app in a computer and on a device, and I'm very clear about what I have to do by when and the order of prioritization, what my deliverables are, so that's out of my brain in there, and I just have to allocate time to go through it and do it. And it's a really amazing life because I'm not carrying it all around up here. It's well-documented. And for me, it's kind of fun to plan and strategize. So I live into that. So all of these things, these 10 areas, are part of the Wheel of Perspective, which is a downloadable one-sheeter that you can rate yourself on and see exactly where you're out of alignment in the wheel. I'll link to that below. These are also what the 10-Day Health, Wealth, and Happiness Challenge goes over one day at a time. I told you about day three, eating a nutrient-rich food, and I make the high-performance shake. So if you haven't gone through that yet, the link for that is below as well. If you are serious about amping your immunity, protecting yourself, protecting the world, not being the conduit for any viral outbreak if you can help it, these are the things, the fundamentals you have to have in play. That being said, let's go through the crucial needle movers now to make sure we're dialed in on these things. So I'm going to go through these and review them with you, and then I'm going to flip to my interview with John, then I'll come back and I'll go over the action list so that you can hit the ground running as soon as you're done with this training with an action list and you have top three priorities. I call them your big three moves, set and ready to roll. How's that sound? Good? Awesome. Two parts of the crucial needle movers in regard to amping our immunity and protecting ourselves. For our body at a cellular level, we went over a lot of them in the 10 fundamentals, the wheel of perspective, all right here. These are huge to making sure our body is ready in case we get you know, tagged with the coronavirus or any virus or any sickness. Second, there's cellular, cellular protection that's science-based that really helps our body. Dr. John and I are gonna talk through that in just a moment for you. The big ones are D3, vitamin D3, vitamin C, elderberry. He also touches on magnesium and zinc. So you'll see that in a minute. I'm not gonna go deep here because we go deep in our interview for you. And then of course, following protocol, washing our hands frequently. Uh, you can wear masks. Dr. John and I were gonna talk about that, but we didn't get to talk about that too much. If you're gonna be out in public, there's a controversy right now about whether masks work or not. But what the, the idea is from what the science shows is that masks do reduce the possible spread <laughs> if you're infected of that getting out into the world. And it does reduce to a limited degree, depending on the, the type of mask you use, it getting in, if that makes sense which it should. <laughs> Three, monitoring your energy. Energy is a huge part. Dr. John and I talk about this towards if you're feeling just low, negative, neutral energy, you're more apt to get sick. Like there's a psychology and a physiology response to it. So be careful about when you think through your emotional, your mental, and your physical energy that you're doing things to uplift. You'll see a lot of that work comes back to here, the fundamentals. 
Like, what are you doing from the happiness perspective? Exercise, taking breaks, just to get reconnected with life, bring more joy, more passion, more positivity, more presence, that back into your life. Does that all make sense? So I want to make sure you think about those things. Four, recognizing new behaviors and mindset that's necessary now. I've had to curb most of the bigger event travel that I have coming up in the next one to five months. I've had to be very careful about listening, and we'll talk about that down here for our mind, to the sources that are not trying to generate fear as much as trying to report the data. So I've got a few resources I'm going to put down below for you that you'll see that I use, the COVID uh, John Hopkins breakout that shows where all the cases are that are active and the ones that um, are, have resulted in deaths and so on, that kind of thing. It's like a dashboard. Also, a really powerful interview with Joe Rogan and Michael Osterholm, I think his name is. He's a disease effect, infectious disease and viral spread expert for the last 25, 30 years. That interview helped me immensely in terms of how to plan for the future, these kinds of things. So these people and the people that are understanding of how this works from a science based background are telling us we just need to be out of the equation in bigger groups. We need to really think about the new behaviors and mindsets we have to have when our tendencies or our habits are to go to bigger events or go to certain things and do certain things. But you got to be more aware and more intentional about how that plays out. So this is all for the body. Now for the mind, and I touched on a little bit of this, and we'll talk a lot about this with Dr. John. First, we have to find mentors who exhibit the three R's. This is something that we teach as part of our work as expert positioning. The three R's are this. The expert is a research reporter expert. That means they're pulling real data from real places. Typically more academic, more medical based in terms of the thing that's going on right now. You'll see Dr. John do this in our, in our interview in a little bit. And we have the role model, the person who's actually doing the work and they're showcasing it. Third, the results expert. A lot of people follow me and work with me because I've generated real results in my short time on this planet in the last 30 years, specifically in business, sold a business, created multiple profitable businesses since then. And that business that I sold created from scratch with my wife, my ex-wife, Tara. And we really went after helping people get connected to the internet, but we put in the work and our body showed it, or at least my body showed it. By the time we were done, I was 70 pounds heavier. I was not in a good mental space. Financially, we were well, well, but the rest of it, ugh. <laughs> so I had to dial that in since then. And it's been, what, 20 years now? That's amazing how fast time flies. So my challenge for you as you think about the crucial needle movers here, we'll talk about those Dr. John, is to pick mentors through this crisis or any others that follow these three R's. Research, reporter, role model, results expert. Second item here, resources that are factual. So I'm talking about the COVID um, outbreak dashboard, and I'll share that link with you below. The um, people that I follow, Joe Rogan, his podcast with Dr. Michael, or I don't even know if he's a doctor, Michael Osterholm, who's wrote many books on infectious disease, viral outbreaks, those kind of things. So your job and my job is really clear here. We got to pick mentors and get resources that we check frequently to see if there's any course correction or anything happening close to us. So for me and other resources are local and regional newspapers to see if there's any outbreaks. But I'm also on the emailing lists for my girls for school, for um, the different things that I'm involved with to make sure. And even where I live, we have an email list and they're letting us know, hey, here's the things you need to be aware of as you live here in a high rise condo to assure that you're, you know we're cleaning things. But we have disinfection, disinfectant all around and make sure you're using that and you're opening doors and so on and so forth. So that I'm paying attention to these things. So my challenge for you is you think about these, who are your mentors? What are your resources? And third, communicating openly and consistently. Dr. John and I talk a little bit about this with our kids. There's a lot of like, oh my gosh, other friends are freaking out and they're like scared and they don't, it's maybe their first time going through something like this and making sure that you have open, honest, vulnerable, joyful communication around this topic and around this for the future. That's the drive though here, isn't it? We teach this in high performance, courage, influence, persuasion, controlling for openness, as I like to call it, really going after. Is that a worry for you? Okay, well, let's talk about this. Let's get some 
facts, because maybe that'll help reduce the worry and increase the knowledge or competence. So I've had that conversation with my girls and uh, oh, it's been really wonderful because we're learning as we move along through this about how to be better humans, but also how to take care of ourselves better and live into the theme of today's topic around health, wealth, and happiness. So my challenge for you is how well are you communicating? Are you asking, hey, you know what? There's a lot of information out there. Are you doing okay? To your lover, your kids, your brother, your sister, your family, so on and so forth. And if things come up for you, like an emotional overwhelm, a couple of people and I'm coaching report in the morning, they get up and they feel overwhelmed with all this information and they aren't sure how to go through life because they don't know what they can do and what they can't do because they're more social beings or they're in schools where they're, they're now told to stay home and do their classes and all this kind of stuff. But they don't have a support system. So are, do you need a support system? I'm that for you if you want it to be. Do you have a support system? Do you need to be a support system for somebody else? What shows up there for you? Think about that. Number four, be real with fears, thoughts. I love the, the definition of a fear is false evidence appearing real. I'll say that one more time. False evidence appearing real. So I have to be very careful about getting into you know, websites that are more about fear mongering and sensationalism and all that, like typical news sites today, especially like the CNNs and those kind of things, and getting more into the data which is the link I have below for you, the, the COVID dashboard. The interviews with people who really understand this stuff aren't about sensationalism as much or, or at all. They're about the facts of things and really going after that. If you want to get into a great interview, that Joe Rogan interview is down below as well. But be real with that. As those fears and thoughts come up, and it kind of comes back to number three, are you acknowledging them? Are you getting support on them? Are you reaching out to people to talk them out? Sometimes just talking about them and expressing them help you reduce that fear, that thought and replace it with a more positive, more productive, <laughs> come back to those Bs, more purposeful fear. You know, if I get too caught up in it, and I sure have in the last week, I'm like, oh my gosh, the markets, oh my gosh, this, oh my gosh, that. I'm reaching out to people. Hey, I need to talk this out. And it helps so much. If you need that kind of support, just comment below or reach out to me and I'll help you or we'll guide you or do whatever we can do to take care of you. That being said, let's go ahead and jump into the interview with Dr. John and I, and then I'll be back right after it, and we'll go through our action list so you can hit the ground running. Enjoy. So it's such an honor to be in the company of Dr. John Sodery. One of the things I love about Dr. John, he's been part of our community, as you, many of our Master Cube members know, he's added tons of value in our chat log for the last two, two and a half years, is that he brings the science and the data into our world but is able to describe it in a way that is much easier to understand than us reading that information on our own. So what I want to make sure of as we've gone over those 10 fundamentals is that you have a frame with more depth and articulation on exactly what it is to protect our body and also very, very, we're very cautious and diligent about protecting our mind too. Because here's what we know, we're thrown tons of information. And Dr. John and I were just talking a little bit ago about how the news and all these things, their job is to use this to create more visits, more views, more money. And they, as you probably know, as you probably have seen, they're really good at titling things to generate fear, to almost immobilize us, to make us feel like, well, as you probably have seen, toilet paper is out at Costco, these kind of things, to generate this huge amount of uh, response. And what our job is, is to sort out what it is for us along the principle of today's training to protect ourselves, and amp our immunity so that we're best prepared. Us, our family, those we care for, those we love, and others in the world. So that all being said, what I want to do is break down. We've already gone over the 10 fundamentals. So I want to break down for us in the realm of protecting our body, cellular protection. So I'm going to introduce Dr. John now. He's going to talk a little bit about his approach and what things to think about. And Dr. John would love to hear from you in terms of kind of start us off with your view on things, and then we'll dive into cellular protection. Go ahead. Well, Charlie, it's great to be here, and um, I appreciate you know all your kind words. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, hey, before we get started, you guys, I wanted to tell you that I'm a scientist and I'm not an MD. You know, and I do not provide medical advice. So, what we're doing today is I do scour the scientific literature. I try to find the top people all around the world. I study their research. I try to piece it together. 
And then I use that to try to live a healthier life, live a longer life. Um, you know, I have two young children. They weren't born until I was in my 50s. And I'm highly motivated to be a strong 60-year-old, which I am now. And I'm motivated to be uh, a 35-year-old, 70-year-old 10 years from now. And so I'm doing everything I can to stay healthy. But I'm not providing medical advice. Um, I'm sharing some of what I think is the best science. And then what I expect you to do is to talk to your doctor and say, hey, listen, I was thinking about taking this particular supplement. Are you okay with it? Or I was thinking about changing how I eat in this fashion. Are you okay with it? So I'd like you to vet everything with your doctor. Um, just because it works for me doesn't mean necessarily that it's right for you. Um, but uh, so just want to get that out of the way right up front. Um, so Charlie, you and I were talking about this. So last week I flew out to Los Angeles and I had two 14 hour days, flew back. My flight to Atlanta got screwed up. So I had to fly from LAX to JFK and then run through the airport. And what really grabbed me on that flight was the amount of fear that I could see in everyone's faces. Plus the fact that more than a third of them were wearing full masks. You know, a lot of those people had glasses on as well. Everybody was bundled up and everybody was stressed. Um, you know, right now, you know, this, we're facing this coronavirus and I do not want to minimize the risk at all. Um, I think it's, you know, I think it's a real challenge. And I think we're really going to have to work our way through this. And it's, it's going to be a challenge for all of us. So what I find on the news is that they're really good about teaching you the basics. How do you keep these virus particles out of your nose, out of your eyes, and out of your lungs? What can you do? So washing your hands, it's a great idea. Stop touching your nose, your eyes, your face. That's a great idea. Um, I guess for me, when I'm looking at it, given how much it's spread, I think there's a very realistic chance that I'm going to be exposed to it. Um, and if some of those virus particles get into my nose or into my, you know, uh, into my eyes, um, you know, three things can happen. One is that... I don't get sick at all. The second thing is I get sick, but it's very mild. My immune system fights it off effectively. I develop immunity to that virus and I recover. And then the third thing is I get extremely sick. The virus makes it from my sinuses and my throat down into my lungs. I end up with viral pneumonia, maybe with some secondary bacterial pneumonia, and I end up with lung damage, I may end up in intensive care, and I may not survive. So to me, I want to amp up my immune function. I want to, I want to block that from happening any way that I can. So um, that's kind of a starting point. And uh, Thank I, you so you know, much. I want to I want to question people I have, Dr. John, that yes. I've heard, is once you have it, how do you not get it again? It sounds like your body builds an immunity to it if it gets reintroduced later Yeah, on. I mean, I think in general, once you have defeated a virus, mm -hmm. you, have, you have developed an immunity. You know, you, the body knows the signature of the virus. When it sees it again, it can immediately uh, attack it. Um, I mean, this is a new thing. It's brand new. Yeah. And again, if something mutates, then you could have an immunity to the previous version, but maybe not to the new version. So. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not a virologist. I'm not a virus expert, and I don't. Yeah, uh, don't I think claim the, the message here is is that the way the human body is beautifully designed. Yeah, that once you get it, you have it. Your body knows the signature, and it's kind of an immune pr protocol or, or way of handling it. Yeah, but, yeah. So go ahead. You were talking about ways to. So, uh, so I want to make it really simple for you guys, but I also want to give you a little bit of the science underneath, so you understand how things work. Because when people just tell me go do A, B, C, and D. And I don't understand how it works. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to stick with it. It doesn't, you know, it's, it's not going to be compelling for me. So, okay. Um, my first approach, you guys, would be to optimize your vitamin D levels. And I know a lot of people are going to go, oh, vitamins, what are they going to do? Well, your vitamins, like vitamin D in particular, are 
critical to your innate immunity. And why is that? It's because when you have sufficient quantities of vitamin D, your body makes these antimicrobial peptides. I won't tell you what peptides are, I promise. <laughs> um, and, but these are your first defense against these microbial and viral pathogens. And they, uh, they're absolutely critical. So there's one called catholicitin and one called defensin. These are the two primary ones. And so what I, you know, how I view it is, is this. Let's say you're on an airplane and there's a terrorist, okay? That virus, I'm just, that virus is trying to get into your cell and inject its genetic material into your cell and take it over so it can make hundreds or thousands of additional viruses and spread. So that's how it works. It injects its code into your cell, takes it over to make more viruses. You need to keep that virus out of your, out of the nucleus. So in the plane, you need to keep that terrorist out of the cockpit. And so you could look at these antiviral and antimicrobial peptides as kind of your sky marshals between the virus and the nucleus that, that are going to protect you. And so what happens is when you have low vitamin D, you turn down, you downregulate the body's uh, production of these two uh, peptides, and you really put yourself in jeopardy. When you have sufficient vitamin D, you upregulate the expression of those peptides, and you have plenty of sky marshals between that terrorist and the cockpit, or between that virus and the nucleus and the cell where it's trying to, it's trying to get to. Um, so if you look at, and, and, and the beautiful thing about these peptides is that they're very broad spectrum against bacteria, against tuberculosis, against different viruses, uh, that viruses that have a membrane. Um, and so they're, they're critical and they're expressed in your nose, you know, in the epithelium, in your lungs. They've also been shown to, to help increase cell stiffness and decrease cell permeability in terms of your lung, the cells in your lungs, which are the ones that you most want to protect. So um, that would be the first thing that I would do. And if you say, why would you do it, John? Like, how do I know this is, how do I know this is real? Um, well, there was a review article that looked at over, that looked at, I believe, 25 randomized controlled trials. And then they had over 10,000 participants across these 25 trials. And the conclusion was that vitamin D supplementation reduced the risk of acute respiratory infection. So high vitamin D, lower risk of respiratory infection, low vitamin D, much higher risk. And if you look at the N. Haynes study, which I know none of you have, but they are looking at all the different, they're looking at Americans and they're saying, what, what uh, micronutrients are they deficient in? Um, 60 or 70% of this country does not get the right amount of vitamin D. They don't get the, a sufficient amount of vitamin D. So it's huge. So that would be my first thing. I want to bring up my vitamin D. I want to make plenty of sky marshals that are going to be between that virus or that terrorist and the cockpit or that, that virus and the cell nucleus. Okay. Um, I'm going to pause and let you, I'm going to drink something and let your brain cool off for a second and rest. And Thank you so much, Dr. John. So the biggest thing, uh, many people have asked me, like, what are you taking exactly? And I just want to let you know, Dr. John has recommended things to me and I'll make that available. If you'd like it, just comment either below the play of the premiere of this or comment in our replay. And I'll make sure that you can get a copy of this is exactly what I'm taking. Uh, yes. Again, we're not doctors or anything. It's just what we're taking that are good quality sourced supplementation and vitamins and so on. Yeah. And then uh, and, and that reminds me, Charlie, if you do take vitamin D, I think it's a really good idea to also take some vitamin K2. I have a video on YouTube. You can, you can hear all about it. 
I'll make sure um, I'll, we make sure to, to link to that in the, down below. Yeah, Charlie yeah. can link to that, and we don't have time to get into that. But that's something that you want to do along with the D. If you if you and your doctor decide that increasing your D levels are good. One other thing is if you live in an area that's sunny, if you go outside and expose your arms and legs um, for let's say 20 minutes, you can make a very substantial dose of vitamin D by doing that. So awesome. Um, okay. Maybe you in Florida, it, I'm doing that every day, but you know, when I lived in right. Michigan back in the you know nineties yeah. and before, <laughs> yeah. that was a and, trick. Yeah. And even if you're outside of Michigan right now, the sun may not be high enough in the sky, Charlie, to make much vitamin D. Got it. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. Really appreciate okay. so it. That, so we talked about number one, which was we, we want to optimize our vitamin D levels. Yeah. Um, and number two is I'd like to, uh, I, I want to optimize my intake of vitamin C. Now, vitamin D is fat soluble and your body stores it. Vitamin C, on the other hand, is water soluble. Oh. And so it uses what it needs and then it excretes the rest. And uh, I'm actually, I, I want to show you something. Um, let me see if I can bring this up on the screen. Tell me if this works, Charlie. Can you see the article? Yeah, I sure can. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So this and is. And we'll a, make sure to link to the article uh, too below. Yeah, yeah. So basically, and I'm just going to take you through real quick. So everyone knows that vitamin C is an antioxidant. What people don't realize though is vitamin C is a very good reducing agent. And your white blood cells um, will pull it out of your blood and concentrate it so you have 50-fold or even 100-fold higher levels of vitamin C inside your white blood cells. And then they use that reducing power to create reactive oxygen species, or just think of them as bullets that they use to kill things. So... Um, if you have low vitamin C, as you can see on the screen, you end up with impaired immunity and you end up with higher susceptibility to infections. Um, so step one for me is I want to make sure I get at least 200 milligrams of vitamin C every single day. Um, and then if I ever feel like I'm getting sick, I up the dose. And you say, John, why do you do that? Because 200 milligrams is probably sufficient for my routine needs and for my white blood cells to have, you know, have full ammo to be ready. But as soon as they start shooting, they're going to use up most of their vitamin C when they start fighting something and killing something. And so I'm going to, my needs are going to go up by two, four, you know, six fold and I need to resupply. So I normally, when I feel like I'm getting sick, I'll go from 200 milligrams up to a thousand milligrams. And if I really am feeling sick, I'll take that thousand milligrams a couple of times during the day. So again, I'm not telling you that's what you should do. I'm telling you that's what I do. Um, but I believe that 200 milligrams is a baseline amount and then bumping it up um, when you get sick because your white blood cells are gonna use up all their vitamin C and you need to resupply them. So, um, uh, wow, that makes it really clear and, and yeah. awesome. Thank you so much. And, the, and you know, the scary part too is if you look at scurvy, which is the disease that you get when you have extremely low vitamin C levels, hmm. um, most of the people that die from scurvy, they, they actually die from pneumonia. Um, that's one of the most frequent causes of death from people that have that. And if you look at people that have pneumonia, remember that's what the coronavirus that you know the people that die are the people that get pneumonia they get the infection in their lungs people with pneumonia generally have very much decreased plasma vitamin c levels so okay um, thank you yeah. great all right so that was two things again i'm going to drink some water let your brain cool off we're still seeing your vitamin c uh report mm. thanks charlie yeah yeah, yeah. i'm not I'm not Hold the most off. skilled, skilled <laughs> with that. Yeah, no yeah. worries, my man. Yeah, yeah, cool. I <laughs> love how you're living into what we taught. Hydration. Yeah. Saturation of the body with water. Yeah. Um, I'm going to throw in a little bonus one for you guys right here, and that is that um, most Americans are also, more than half of Americans don't get enough magnesium every day, and low magnesium can lead to higher inflammation. 
And I also believe that people taking some magnesium, it's not one of the four, but I believe that people adding a, uh, some magnesium, whether it be magnesium glycinate or magnesium citrate or magnesium chloride, that that will help people and help bring down inflammation because it's the inflammation in your lungs that is what's triggering the damage when people get the pneumonia. So I just want to throw that one in as a little extra, extra Thank bonus. You, yeah. Like that. yeah. So, okay. So item number three is actually a plant derived extract. And there was a woman from Israel back in the late eighties and early nineties. And she read the scientific literature and she saw that for thousands of years, people had been taking this black elderberry extract um, as a way to help them when they were getting sick or to prevent from getting sick. And so she did her doctoral dissertation on studying different extracts from black elderberries. And she was a virologist, so she, she actually identified the extracts that would inhibit uh, influenza virus. And uh, she commercialized a product called Sambucol back in the 90s. And I learned of it in the 90s. And at first, it sounded a little hokey to me. Um, and I started using it. And for the last 20 years, I do not get on a plane without my Sambucol tablets or Sambucus tablets with me because it, it has saved my bacon. So let me take you through a, a couple of studies real quick. Um, there was a study where they looked at over 300 uh, passengers traveling from Australia to an overseas destination. And I think they picked Australia because the flights are longer, you're more likely to get sick. And half the people got the elderberry extract and half the people did not. And they wanted to say, would there be any difference in terms of the uh, number of days that people had colds and that were sick? And remember that coronavirus is very similar to cold virus. Um, in fact, most of the cold viruses are coronaviruses. And here's what was kind of cool. The people that got the black elderberry extract had less than half as many sick days as the people that didn't. So, and that was significant wow, okay. at the 98% you know, confidence interval. So, and also if you looked at how sick they got, the total score for the people that didn't get it was 583. And for the people that did get it, less than half at 247. So it significantly reduced the cold duration and the cold severity. Um, and I know from my own personal experience that it has been extremely valuable for me as one of my go-to strategies to avoid getting sick. Now, the coronavirus has only been identified in the last 60 days. There are no studies looking at elderberry and its impact on coronavirus. And so I'm not trying to make that connection, but I don't want to get the flu. I don't want to get a cold. And I also don't want to get corona. So I'm using that to minimize my risk of getting a, a respiratory infection. So um, there's also a clinical study that um, where they, there was a, uh, an outbreak of influenza A. I'm sorry, it was influenza B. I'm sorry, I get that wrong. And the people that got the elderberry extract, over 93% of them um, had a significant improvement in symptoms within two days. And the people that didn't get it, it took them six days to show that same level of improvement. So, wow, okay. Um, yeah. So those are three things that you can take that, uh, you know, things, three things that I do because I don't want to get influenza. I don't want to get colds. And of course, I don't want to get any kind of viral infection, including the, uh, the coronavirus. So yeah. Charlie, I'm going to kind of turn it back to you if you want to yeah, you know, ask any questions. And then sure. we'll talk about the last thing, which is something that you do, not something that you take. So. Okay. Yeah. So in light of everything you've shared, and you and I have talked about this, that's a practice that I have in play going into our theme of today's training, which is how, exactly how we're amping our immunity and protecting ourselves. So this is a practice I've got in play for me and my family and anybody who asks, because, uh, you know, as we do this work, John and I put this information in the world, people are like, hey, you seem to have a, an idea or you seem to be in constant study of these things, the growth mindset going after learning and applying and putting in play. 
And a lot of people compliment John and I on our skin and the way we look and our energetic, you know, smile and all this kind of stuff. So these are the aspects of what's going on in the bigger picture, but also in line of what's happening in the world right now. So I just want to make sure that these practices and these 10 fundamentals and what John's just covered, these are things that we're handling now. But as a practice for you living a healthier life, this is things that you need to consider and put into play on an enduring basis as well. That being said, go ahead, John, and share whatever yeah, else. Yeah, and I, and I also know, I remember um, recently Charlie actually sent me a note back saying, wow, that, that black elderberry has made such a difference yeah. for me, for my daughters, and so on. So I, yeah. I, almost everyone that I've introduced it to, they're like, oh my God, this stuff is incredible. Yeah. Um, we and, feel any tingle come on, any of those sensations of that cold, yeah. and we have this shelf, and it's like, click, 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 click. And yeah, we're on. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and I can tell you, it's been you know, and, and, and that's, and to me, that's the key underlying strategy, guys, is this is a geometric progression where you have one virus particle and then it creates more and more and more. Yeah. You have to kill it when it's small. You want to get it at the, mo at the earliest stage. That's why I really want you to already be taking the D, already be taking the C, and maybe take it a preventive dose of the elderberry because you want your body to kill it off when it's small. Because once you get into the millions or, tr or, or higher number of viruses and you're shedding virus and you're infecting other people, it's a much harder, you, you know, your chance to win the battle is, is much lower. So, yeah. Right, cool. Thank you. So a couple other things that I wanted to go over with you, Dr. John, if it's okay. Yes. Yeah, it, please. When we break down our training today, we have for the mind, these are the crucial needle movers for our body and for the mind. And what you've just shared is some of the studies that you found from mentors or academic studies or, or things that are put into the world. And I want to be real clear, and I'll talk more about this once I come out of this interview and I'll go into more of the training. But are there any specific mentors that you have that model the three R's? And just so we're all clear on what those three R's are, people that are the research reporter, like what Dr. John's doing when he references articles as a mentor or an expert, but he's also the role model. He's stepping into and doing the practices that he's telling us. And he's also the results expert, meaning that he's generated real results in his life and other people's lives through the practices that we've talked through. And really critical. A lot of people are like, I don't know who to listen to. I don't understand. Uh, so I always measure based on those three R's. And you and I are blessed to have met through Brendan Burchard's work. And yes. Brendan teaches this as part of expert positioning. And that the the mentors or experts that you want to follow, I always challenge people to measure them on the three R's. Yeah. Are they reflecting on real data and studies? And that can be hard to understand because you don't know the topic, right? Are they a role model for it? Are they generating results with it? And I hope you're sensing as you're watching this interview with Dr. John and I, that both of us come from all of these R's as much as we possibly can. Like yeah. I've generated a lot of result in terms of the approaches that I've used in health, wealth, and happiness, as so many know. And Dr. John, you're like, that idea of being the, the 35 year old at 70 and the 40 year old at 90 and all these kind of things. Like, yeah, I'm living result of all these practices. Yeah. I know Charlie, when I go backpacking out in the North Carolina mountains, you know, with 20 and 30 year olds, yeah, they are like, you're 60 man. Like what you got like, and they're like, okay, where's your ID? Like we, they, they want to card you to see, are you, are you yeah, really, yeah. you know, exactly. I, was, I really was born in the 1950s. Yeah. Right? It, that, wow. that puts a smile on my face. That's always, that's always funny. Um, yeah. But I, I do agree with you, Charlie. If someone is telling you something, but you look at them and you say, it doesn't seem like it's working for you. Then you wonder, is the strategy flawed yeah. or... Are you not doing, you know, are you not doing it yourself? So yeah. that's, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be mean, but I mean, I want to see if somebody's teaching me something, yeah. I want them to show me the data, but then I also want them to show me that it's working. For, yes. Know, it's working for them. Yeah. The last thing that I want to cover you, Dr. John, and then we can yeah. wrap up this part of our training today yeah. is this idea that you and I both have kids yeah. and they have friends yeah. and depending on their parents and depending on their way of, uh, absorbing what's happening in the environment. There's a few kids that I know in the 10, 11 range that are completely freaking out and yeah. their parents aren't really helping them frame for this. So I've had the conversation with my girls who are 15 and 17 now about we got to be real. We got to be wise. We've yeah. got to follow the fundamentals. We've got to do the things that, you know, science has shown uh, from what you've shared, D3, C, elderberry, uh, magnesium even, 
and just make sure these things are dialed in. And then if we have any sensation that we're dialing up, as you've suggested, but helping them ease the fear, the sensationalism, because they may be watching the news or seeing something on the paper or hearing from mom and dad. Is there any, maybe one, two or three things that you, you can suggest to us or just uh, tell us that you've done to really help with your children? In that um, I mean, I think uh, I, you and I talked about, you know, I was putting Zachary to bed, not last night, but the night before. He said, Dad, I want you to watch this video. And I said, okay. So he started playing this video. And it was a kid's version of teaching them about the coronavirus and how they should handle it and how they should wash their hands and not touch their face. Yeah. And I could tell he was concerned. And, I, and he said, did you, did you know this? Did you know that? Did you know this? And I said, you know, I did. And those are all really good things to do. And I said, beyond that, we're also doing, you know, kind of one, two, three, four. So that's why in the morning... Yeah you know, you get your little spray under your tongue with some vitamin D and K2 and you you know, you get your vitamin C and so on. So I, I do think that if you're afraid, then your kids are going to feel that and then they're going to become afraid as well. Yeah. Um, you don't want to crank up your fight or flight response because it might get you ready for a fight at the expense of your immune system. So as you jack up your fight or flight, mm -hmm. your immune function comes down. And the other part is, and Charlie's the part I was gonna wrap up on is, you need to get good sleep. I don't care what you take for supplements. I don't care about anything else. If you don't sleep, you're gonna knock down your immune function and you are very likely to get sick. So um, I don't know if, do we have, Three minutes, I'll tell you about yeah, this. Yeah, I'd love to. Go ahead. Cool. Yeah, so um, I know everybody knows this. When you don't get sleep, you're more likely to get sick. And I just want to put some numbers around it because they did a study in the journal Sleep in 2015. And that is that they compared, they looked at 164 people, both men and women. And they said, okay, we want to compare people that are getting seven hours of sleep. That's the baseline. What happens if we bring that down so they get between five and six hours, and then what happens if they get less than five hours? And the numbers, you know, I knew the numbers would go up in terms of getting sick, yeah. but the number, if you go from seven hours to between five and six, your chance of getting sick in this study went up 4.2 fold. Wow. So you are over 400% more likely to get sick if you slept five to six hours versus seven. Yeah. And then if you went below five hours, then you, you actually won the prize because now they went up 450% or your chance of getting sick went up by four and a half full. Wow. Um, so no, no news that when you don't sleep, you get sick. Just maybe the magnitude, you know, even surprised me. I, I yeah. knew it was more likely. I thought maybe it'll be twice as likely, but you know, that four to four and a half times as likely. Yeah. Um, you know, really grabbed me. So I Thank really, you so much. I, yeah. you know, try to, I, whatever you need to do to de-stress, whether it's taking a walk or turning off the news, um, yeah. going to bed an hour earlier, those are really good things that you're going to do to help your immune system. So yeah. it's ready. Your special forces guys are out, are ready to go out there and protect you. Um, and we don't have time to talk about it, but there's some data around zinc lozenges. If anyone takes those, I would suggest that they look for a zinc acetate or zinc gluconate. The acetate's the best. Um, okay. And I wouldn't take them for more than, say, five days. Got because it. if you take too much zinc, it can push down your copper, and that can cause other problems. Got but it. I know a lot of people love zinc. and I just So what's the primary benefit of zinc? Like the, what it does in your body from the cell? So I, I believe the, the way it's working mechanistically, Charlie, is... The zinc ionizes, so you end up with zinc plus two, and then it coats your throat with zinc plus two. And I think it makes it harder for the viruses to get in and to replicate. I think that's what's happening. So I believe it's, and um, I, I would not personally use any of the sprays that put zinc in your nose. Okay. Because some of the people that have done that have had temporary loss of their sense of smell or in some cases permanent. So I would be ah, very okay. careful about putting zinc up my nose. Up. But in terms of the lozenges, you want zinc acetate, 
or zinc gluconate. Yeah. Because if the zinc in the lozenge is held too tightly, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. And the problem mm -hmm. is that the lozenges that taste good are the ones <laughs> that have the zinc uh, yeah. you know, bundled up tightly. Got it. And the ones that don't taste as good, because zinc is kind of astringent, you know, yeah. kind of makes your mouth feel a little puckered sure. or whatever. Yeah. Um, those are the ones that work well. So it's unfortunately probably the ones that don't taste good are the ones that work better. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you so much. So in that, is there any other things you want to share with us or are we good to wrap up our, this part of our um, I, you know, I think, I think um, getting outside midday, getting a little sun in your eyes, uh, turning your screens into night shift mode, you know, so that you're not screwing up your circadian rhythms. You want to be wide awake at 12 noon. You want to be in a deep sleep, you know, at 12 midnight or one yeah. in the morning. Um, you know, that, I think that's going to help you as well. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, some people like to take N-acetylcysteine to try to help boost glutathione levels in the lungs. But, you know, let's just leave it at that. I think okay. Sure people already have a headache from yeah. too much information. I'm going to shut my mouth and, okay. and we'll leave it so, right there. So. First and foremost, thank you so incredibly much for being here today in this training session with us. This is going to, I'm hoping this will leave a legacy, helping a lot of people that have asked me, and I know they've asked you, hey, what are you doing to, you know, live healthier? Now they're, that's on radar for some people because they're just kind of floating along in life, doing what they do. And second, we'll have all the links to the related things that we've shared sure. and talked through available below. And third, if you want to learn more about what Dr. John does or what I do, we'll have links to that too. Sure. Because as you can see, what we're sharing here, the 10 fundamentals, protecting our body, our mind, for many people, I would say for everybody, is a journey, not a destination. It's not like one and done. Yeah. And when we get into the journey aspect of change, here's what I know from coaching, is that from coaching so many beautiful souls on this planet, is that it requires some form of uh, behavioral change for the long term. And depending on how long you've been on the planet and how deep your behavioral habits are, that's, that's some work. <laughs> and you need somebody there maybe every week, every other week, challenging you, asking you, even just being accountable to you. Now, whether that's John or I or anybody else, our challenge for you is really clear. If you're going to make these changes and you're doing it like as a family or with friends or in general, find at least one accountability buddy so that you can make this change to feel better, more vibrant, more loving, more engaged, more joyous. And along with the themes of what we say, more healthy, wealthy, and happy too. So that ends this part of the session and we'll step right back into our training now. Thanks again, John. Have a yeah. great one. You're welcome, Charlie. It was great, great to be part of this with you. So, um, Hey, as we finish, I have one more thing that I thought was interesting, and that is, I call it the brushing your teeth test, and that is, everyone knows that if you buy one tube of toothpaste, and for 60 days that you brush your teeth, that things are going to be better. But it's not like, oh, I brushed my teeth for 60 days, now I'm good. So it's a matter of, you need to sustain that course change to get the benefit, and if you don't, then your teeth are going to turn yellow, and they're going to, you know, you're going to end up with decay, and and yeah. gingivitis and so on. So to me, that's the way I say, you know, if you, you have to Love stay that. with it and yeah. it has to be long-term and everyone gets it with brushing your teeth. Yes. But if you buy one bottle of vitamin C and you do it for three months, it doesn't mean that you're set for life. And that's yes. where I, we have to kind of move people a little bit. So. Thanks for sharing that very powerful idea in, uh, right. in the relation to how that can play out for the journey, not the destination. And thanks again. And here we go. Yeah. We'll go right back into our training now. Great. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, we're back. Here is the action list for everything Dr. John and I covered, all the 10 fundamentals. And I hope you enjoyed that interview, Dr. John and I. It's such an honor and pleasure to know him, to be part of that, to work with him, to go after it. So now we're going to go into the action steps. First of all, assess yourself in the 10 funds, fundamentals. I would challenge you to do that if you need to on a daily basis, but definitely on a weekly basis. At the end of every assessment, ask these three questions. What did I get right in the last day or the last week? Come from a place of gratitude. Second, what did I get wrong in the last day or the last week, depending on you're doing daily or weekly? What needs to change? Excuse me. What did I get wrong and why? That's accountability. Third, what needs to change in the next day or the next week? And what am I committed to? So you'll be, uh, you know what? Sleep is, I got to stop watching the news before I go to bed. That's going to be the thing I'm going to change tonight. And I'm going to see if I sleep better tonight. 
And instead of watching the news, I'm gonna listen to something I find soothing, Frank Sinatra, Lana Del Rey, Billie Eilish, whatever that is for you, or a podcast that's just informative and helpful, or an audio book, or read a book, whatever it is, that's the pivot. So those three questions are incredibly powerful after you've done your assessment. Second, prioritize and plan changes that must be made now. Now this comes right back to the red areas here and specifically this here and this. So really being clear about cellular protections, we talked about with Dr. John, being clear about, you know what, I gotta think about these behaviors I have that could be harmful from the possibility of, it, of getting you know, uh, a virus or, or getting sick or something like that. And that might mean just staying out too late with a lot of people in a gathering, I don't know, whatever that is for you. Third, research what you need to do to change your body and mind now and for the future. So if there's any areas here that, pick, that come up for you, especially in the line of the mind pieces, who are the mentors that you're following? And if you need more help with that, we got links below, but if you need even more help with that, just let us know. Let me know and I'll be happy to guide you on that. What are the resources that you're following that are factual? How are you doing at communicating? And are you checking in with your family on a daily or throughout the day basis? Hey, are you doing okay? I know the markets are da da da. I know that you may have some emotion on this. Just wanna make sure I'm talking it out with you because we love each other, right? Taking care of it. How are you doing there? We need some help with that. Got you covered. <laughs> and number four, develop your resources list to proactively, not reactively check in. Now, what I mean by that is every morning I'm checking in proactively. It's part of my morning ritual to see where we're at today. For me, it's the markets, the economy, and then also with this COVID dashboard that is uh, available online. I've got it linked below. Then throughout the day, I'm checking in. I'm checking in with certain people. I'm checking in with a lot of people in our mastery community to make sure are we doing okay? Is everything moving along? Are there any things I can support you with right now in relation to uh, being more healthy, but also going after your dreams? And those kinds of things. That all being said, all the links below are there for you to really get going with some of the things we've covered today. If we've missed anything or you'd like more articulation, please comment. Dr. John and I are committed to answering those comments and making sure you're taken care of. We may film a bonus interview if that needs to happen. Our job on this beautiful planet is to take care of you, to help you to improve your life, to be role models, results experts, and research reporters that we can help you get to that next level for you, whatever that is, faster than you would on your own, and in the context for what's happening in the world today, to help you amp your immunity and protect yourself too. And I hope we delivered for you. Thank you so much for being here. My job on this planet, outside of what I just shared, is to assure you're living into the five Ps, to feel more purposeful, more passionate, more positive, more productive, and more profitable too. So I hope I delivered on that for you. Health, wealth, and happiness, baby. Let's go. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.